Hey Hickok 45 here. I was sitting around in the living room kind of watching some movies and uh, wearing my gear that I wore back in the Texas Ranger days. Got in the mood to do a chapter two Guns of the West. Just kind of hit me. Yeah. No, no, no. I wasn't a Texas Ranger back in the 1880s or 1870s. I'm not that old. But, uh, but back in 1923 in uh, you know, West Texas, yeah, we wore pretty much the same gear. Same guns we carried and, uh, you know, this is kind of what I wore. So, uh, and I wear it on weekends lots of times. It, uh, I get some funny looks, but that's okay. I'm used to that. But it put me in a mood to drag out a single action. So come with me and let's see what we brought out. This is kind of a chapter two. We just were in the mood to shoot them. And I know that you're in the mood to uh, see them because I have lots of people that uh, contact me and uh, love these guns just as much as I do. Got uh, kind of a progression there. Just uh, probably not going to shoot them all. Just shoot a couple of things here and uh, play some with them. You got the old cap and ball there, 1860 Army. Not going to shoot that today. <laughs> but and then you have the 1873, the original configuration of the Colt single action there, seven and a half inch barrel. And you have the five and a half inch barrel, which I believe came out next uh, before the shortest barrel, the four and three quarters and uh all very popular links you know just uh just depends on what you like and where you're traveling and what you shoot the best and uh, but uh, those are the links of the barrels and i got out the 1873 uh winchester this is uh the uberti course version of it but uh, you've seen that before and that's a that's a good shooter shot that in a lot of cowboy matches and i enjoy that and the double barrel rossi coach gun that's a that's a sweetie it really is made in brazil the overland it's 12 gauge so like i said it's a uh, kind of a chapter two we're just going to shoot and i should be loading uh i'll tell you what let's shoot this first this is my one of my very favorites so let's crank him out here a little bit and uh see what she'll do i won't go into a lot of things again you know you load five in these old guns load one skip a chamber and if you have seen all the videos, you know I go into those sorts of things pretty often as reminders. And then when you close the gate, cock it, it should fall on an empty chamber. And good thing it did, because I don't have my ears on, but I knew it would. So that's just the loading process right there. So we're loading uh, with the holster, 250 grain bullets, lead, 45 Colt. All right. Well, let's just see if we can hit anything with this old gun. I haven't shot it much lately. Might not be able to shoot it. We have a variety of targets. Let's. Oh, there's a cowboy. Let's start with the cowboy. <laughs> oh yeah. Right in the belt buckle. He looks like a bad guy anyway. Yeah. He does, doesn't he? And maybe we can even hit a two-liter with this thing. Yeehaw! <laughs> Maybe we can even hit a gong. Let's see. We might have to allow for windage. We've got a little wind blowing today. Oh, we missed. Did he fire five or did he fire four? Let's find out. Check my flinch. Oh, well, he had another round, but he missed, didn't he? Okay. We'll try old Mr. Gong again. We know we can hit him. That is a sweet gun. Again, that is a seven and a half inch barrel, and uh, that's uh, the original. That was the uh, length of barrel that the cavalry carried, and uh, with a pretty hot load of black powder. It was stiff. It was probably what you would consider the first magnum, because I have shot them with a full case of uh, black powder, and it is stiff. It really is. Let me try that gong again. I don't like to be beat. Okay. And, you know, I really don't remember where to hold on it, but uh, maybe I can see my misses in the leaves or something. Like that. There we go. That's better. Okay. Oh yeah, I was holding too high, I think. Nice, nice. I might just sling one on that old ram while I'm over there. I think if I hold around his belly. Yeah, <laughs> everybody should hunt deer with one of these, right? The ultimate deer hunting pistol revolver. Mm. 
All right, I should get a click here pretty soon. Yeah, okay, that is sweet, that really is. It's fun slinging 250 grains of lead. I mean to tell you, it doesn't get much better. It really doesn't. And that's the link I carried when I was a Texas Ranger. And I carried it just like that. Because uh, when you're on your horse, it's handy there and you're not uh, hanging on your rope and everything and you can reach over there and uh, I found that pretty handy. Let's get, break out the 1873 here, put some rounds in it. So, I always like to carry the rifle in the same caliber, same cartridge, just more convenient. You can load the same cartridges in it as you do your uh, handgun. That's always a nice uh, feature. That's why the 4440 was so popular. The 45 Colt was more popular uh, in terms of numbers in the Colt single action, but the 4440, I believe, came in second, and uh, it was a uh, it was a winner too. It has a slightly next case, so that's one reason I don't shoot it. Uh, I didn't want to get into reloading it. A little more more problematic, I think, in some ways. Okay, I got a Tang sight, and uh, we're gonna go across the hill and see if we can hit anything. I guess we always have to start on the gong, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Let's take out a piggy. Or try to. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Load on Sunday, shoot all week. Hard to beat, huh? I'm going to try a few more of those. This is a fun gun to shoot. Now, you probably notice there's not much recoil. This is a pistol, a revolver cartridge. It's uh, warm enough. If you were to shoot one of these in uh, one of my handguns, especially a short barrel one, and you're a new shooter, you'd think it had plenty of recoil. You really would. But it really, as compared with a 44 Magnum or something, it's a, it's a very comfortable round to shoot. And then when you put it in this big rifle, which is heavy, has a you know octagonal barrel, it's a, it's a heavy gun in a lot of ways. So uh, it's very sweet to shoot. I like shooting a 22. Uh, well, let's try to pick off some of the small ones. If I can hit them with a handgun, I can hit them with this thing, surely. There's a little groundhog standing over there. Yeah, he was standing. I think. I think I knocked him over. Okay. Oh, let's try that uh, red plate up there, the rifle plate. <laughs> sweet, sweet. We'll put a couple more in. One thing I do with a lever gun when I'm walking around the farm plinking is I just leave an empty chamber or an empty cartridge under the uh, hammer like I just did there. I'll fire it and just leave an empty in there until I'm ready to shoot again. It's a nice safety uh, strategy I think. Works pretty well. This is a very popular gun in the uh, cowboy action circuit. A lot of people are shooting 38 through them now and they really are like shooting a uh, uh, 22 but uh, these are sweet to shoot let me show you uh, I think I might have demonstrated this before and I'm not the best at this there ever was if I want to shoot fast I want my Glock or a 1911 but but you can you can rack them off with this thing put a lot of lead down range. I think I've demonstrated that before. And uh, if you have a really light 38, I mean, you can machine gun them, no doubt about it. So that is a sweet, sweet, sweet rifle. And uh, fun to shoot, same caliber, uh, no recoil to speak of. Uh, just a lot of fun. Man, I love that. I love that. And then here's the big boy. If we're going to do a chapter two, we have to shoot the shotgun, don't we? And I have some rounds in my pocket. I'll open this box up. 
Now, in cowboy action matches, I used to uh, I shoot uh, generally the uh, double A holes because they eject a little bit better. They, they come out better. You're not allowed to shoot a gun it has ejectors actually that sling the rounds out, and uh, the the double A holes will come out when you kind of give it that. And we'll see how these do. Okay. Why don't we uh, why don't we see what happens to one of the two liters with a shotgun blast of uh, bird shot. That green one there. <laughs> oh, nice. I like that. I believe they're still a little in the bottom. <laughs> I didn't want to blow my stand up, but uh, that's pretty interesting. We may have to do that more often. Create a little Christmas tree effect. Of course, this one, it'll just blow off. <laughs> Oh boy, nothing like a shotgun. A double barrel is special. That old Coke can there could use some lead, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, he got some. Uh, see if I can hit Mr. Pumpkin. <laughs> At this distance, it didn't do much. I think I might have gone a little bit high. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Okay, let me go a little closer. <laughs> All right, and a little closer. See, that's a good indicator of what a shotgun will do. You have to be pretty close to put a big hole in it because, of course, he's, uh, he's perforated. I'll shoot him right there and I'll watch for the hole. Whoops, better cock the hammer. Oh, there you go. Distance is everything with one of these. Distance is everything. You notice back here, I'm just kind of throwing shot at it and uh, that's all. Let's take a couple more shots with the Colt and then uh, we'll see if I've had enough lead slinging. It's hard to know when, I'm, when I've uh, reached my quota. But I've got this thing dirty, so I think I want to shoot it a couple more times. Remember, you go to half cock, and with these guns, you never put the hammer back down until you pull it all the way back. The old action. Colt or the Colt clone. This is a Colt made in the 50s. It's a second generation. So I came all the way back and went down. Demonstrated that before. And we have a couple of two liters left, don't we? Let's see. We can hit one. Not that time. <laughs> right. All right. I love it. Yeehaw. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, I'm going to put one in that uh, half empty one there. Or I'm going to try. Did he fire four or did he fire five? <laughs> I think he had fired four. Yes. <laughs> ah, sweet. Nothing like a Colt single action. So, that really does take me back to uh, El Paso in uh, the early 20s when I was riding the range. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, I know those of you who enjoy these guns, uh, you understand the special affection, the history, the feel of them, uh, the cartridge, the history of the cartridge, uh, the firearm, or Sam Colt or Wild Bill Hickok or whoever uh, that, that might have carried these things. And of course, Hickok didn't carry them too long because he, uh, he he liked the Captain Ball, the Navy, you know, uh, 36 caliber navies, and I think like, he carried the old Army or the new Army there. I have some, and, and maybe even cartridge guns at times. Uh, but then he died in the in the 70s there, so. Uh, he, he didn't have a long history with the Colt single action, that's for sure. But anyway, sweet guns, sweet guns, and I'm glad you could come out and watch me fire them a little bit today. Life's really good.